Athletics is all about challenges. It's individual challenges, it's team challenges, and it's how to confront those challenges. It's the only lessons you can learn besides discipline. Take orders, give of yourself, sacrifice, be able to take knocks. If you get defeated, get off the deck, come back the next day. It teaches that you have to push your limits. You can't settle for what you thought you were able to do yesterday. And that's something that I teach my kids every day. The sky is the limit. There's so many things that you can learn from this, just playing this little silly game. Early on in the history of Yeshiva College, they established really informal basketball teams. They brought in either volunteer or poorly paid coaches. It was basically student initiated in the same way the student newspaper was student initiated and all these other extracurricular activities, which was an add-on to a yeshiva's life, which was unheard of in Jewish history. The situation begins to change in 1942 when Yeshiva's first professional coach, Coach Bernard Red Sarachek, comes on the scene. The way Sarachek went about coaching basketball was the understanding that his players did not necessarily have the athletic ability to go one-on-one -on -one to overtake their opponent. So plays that do not rely upon great athletic ability, but a certain degree of intelligence, becomes the hallmark of Sarachek. Red had a great imagination. He brought me down to his practice, and I thought I'd go to a beautiful gym. He was down in these public schools late at night, and I see different kids, come. one comes in at nine, one comes in at 10. I said, coach, how can you coach this? How can you have the team together? Well, my kids go to yeshiva, and their classes are staggered, and that's, I have to practice the best I can. So, so he practiced with two people, three people, four people, five people. Maybe at midnight he had the whole team. He was able to teach even with little parts, and then he put the parts together. And the big thing that he really taught, which is, what can I do to make a basket? By looking at the defense. He always brought the defense in. But offensively, he says, I can't play offensively unless I know where the defensive person is. Anybody who saw him understood that he got the most out of the talent that he had. He would yell. Uh, and everybody, but everybody knew, every player knew he would give you the shirt off his back if you needed it, and some players he did. Johnny Halpert embodies the best of Red Sarachek, okay? Pride in being Jewish, a genius in understanding basketball, a profound understanding of the limitations and positive aspects of the yeshiva athlete, without Sarachek's very rough edge. Coach Halpert probably projects a calmer out of appearance, much, much calmer. As I said, Red could be, you know he was there. When I recruit a player, the first half an hour of the discussion is about what he wants to be, what he wants to study, does he want the Jewish Studies program. I don't discuss basketball. I don't discuss basketball because it's secondary. If you want to come to Yeshiva because you're motivated to study, you're motivated by career, you're motivated by values, you're motivated by learning more Torah, and you want to play basketball, hey, this is the place for you, young man. This is the place for you, because you can have it all. The basketball that Red Sarachek originated, that Coach Halpert has promulgated and has interpreted in his own way, is the purest form of the game. And when it works, it's beauty. It's uh, like poetry, like ballet. And um, I believe that Coach Halpert has stayed coaching for all these years because he is trying to achieve that perfection. I often have players who come to me, good players at the beginning of the year, and I ask them to come out for the team. And they say to me, I don't think I can come out. I just, it's just too much for me. And I say to them, you can do it. I know you can do it. So how do you know? I said, because hundreds like you have done it. 
invariably the guys who come out stay. They stay because as the time moves on, they begin to understand, you know, I can do this. And then after the second year, they would never think of not coming out. And by the time the third year is over, they're sorry it's coming to an end. And when they look back on their three years of yeshiva, they look what they've accomplished. They've gotten their Jewish studies enhancement, their secular studies. They are on their way to anything they want to be. That's what yeshiva gives you, you see. It challenges you. Look what I've done. Look where I am. And you know what? Look where I'm going. Because now I'm going out there. And I may have to work 12, 14 hour days. And I'm going to have to balance my family and my religion and my career. And you know what? They're going to do it because they had the experience in here. I can't think of a place where you could play NCAA Division Basketball, learn with some of the leading rabbinic scholars in the world, and be perceived by law schools, medical schools, Wall Street employers as coming from a great academic institution. I came away with an experience which couldn't be matched anywhere else, and that's what I believe. Nowhere but here. 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 Nowhere but here.